Hey Ryan, don't you think it's time that we did an update on your lawn renovation? My what? You know, your lawn renovation, the little side yard project you got going on? Yeah, I know, I've just been kind of busy. Yeah, I know you've been busy, but at the same time, I think people kind of want to know what's going on with that. Alright, well I don't need you to nag me about it. I'm not trying to nag, I'm just trying to tell you that I think it's time to do an update. Fine, I'll get an update done. Okay, cool. So I guess the goal of today's video is not to make a complete fool out of myself, but yet, I guess from the intro there, it looks like maybe I'm trying. It certainly doesn't seem like it, but we're on day 27 today already. That time feels like it's went a little bit quickly, however, there's a few things that are going on. That little bad guy right there is crabgrass. So is that, so is that. So is that. So what that means is that my tenacity is wearing off now. I'm getting some weeds to come in and it's gonna be time for more tenacity. So then you might be saying to yourself, well, it doesn't seem like too big of a problem, Ryan. Once you get out your sprayer, just spray some tenacity down and start killing those weeds. Well, the problem is my sprayer decided that it doesn't want to hold water anymore and it leaked all over me the other day when I sprayed a little bit of what we're gonna talk about in a second as my other problem on the renovation area. So I do have a Sprayers Plus sprayer here that I've been waiting to test out. I just haven't had the time to break into it and get everything going with it with all my renovation stuff going on, but now out of necessity. It's not really a bad thing there. I need to get going on this sprayer anyway, but I have no idea why the other one is leaking. I've heard some other things from people who have had the Chapin one before that it does start leaking. And so I'm going to contact the company soon and figure out kind of what the warranty thing is and what the problem might be. For now I need to get going on this other sprayer. What exactly is up with this weather today? No idea. It's like foggy, looks like it's gonna storm, not sure what it's gonna do, kind of cool outside. I know I don't live in Seattle, I'm pretty aware of that, but something's up out here. Well, because this weather started to be a pain today, then let's talk about my other problem real quickly, which is fungus. You know, I'm really getting tired of fungus this year. Yeah, I definitely hear you there. So I might be having a little bit too much fun with this whole video cloning myself thing, but it's been pretty fun to try. What's not fun though is this stupid fungus that I cannot seem to get rid of over on my yard over here. So what I did a couple days ago was put down about two ounces per thousand, which that's about a thousand square feet over there, of propiconazole 14.3, which is the 14% stuff. So if you go to a store and you get some of the traditional like hose and spray fungus products, then those are going to usually have that same ingredient, but they're going to be at a much lower rate just because they just want to make sure for homeowners that you know how to use the product and if you don't know how to use the product then you're not going to cause any damage or anything but I have this stuff here that I sprayed down so far it doesn't look like it really did too much but after you get a fungus started it's very hard to get rid of it at that point and mine kind of was going crazy before I got on top of it I probably should have done a preventative of some kind but I didn't expect that it was going to be 95 degrees in the middle of September plus the humidity that we normally get in the summer I didn't expect any of that obviously so I'm at where I'm at right now. So my other option is this. So that's some Heritage G. This is in the granular form. You can also check out the main ingredient here. So, so if you go to the store and you find a Scott's Disease X bag, it's gonna be kind of like an orange bag, I think. That's the exact same ingredient as what's in here, and I believe it might be a little bit cheaper. I can't remember. I got this bigger bag because I knew I was having some issues this past summer. But if you do need something like that, I do believe that Scott's makes a product with the same active ingredient and same percentage of the ingredient as well. So if it does stop being misty and rainy today I'm gonna to try to put this down it should be a rate of four pounds per thousand square feet so I have just right around 1100 
so I can go just over four pounds in my spreader. And then, as Alan would say, we're gonna hope for the best. Four ounces. I'm gonna try a setting of like three and start there. If I have to do two passes, I'd rather do that than it run out. All right, even that first little go there, it wasn't putting out very much. Let's go actually to four here and see how that goes. So setting a four was pretty good for me. It all kind of depends on your walking speed too and your specific spreader, but in case you do have my spreader, in case you want to go off of something close to that, that would be what I was using today. So I can tell you right off the bat that this harness is much, much more comfortable. Like, that's number one that I noticed right away. Number two is that my chapin would seem to kind of surge a lot when I would actually use the handle and I'd first get started with it. So you'd push it down, it, like a lot of product would come out and then it would kind of regulate itself back. I'm not seeming to notice that so far with this one. It's more like just exactly like you would expect it to be right when you hit the trigger. I'm gonna do a little bit of a driveway test here. Um, my driveway is a little bit wet so it's gonna be harder to tell where the water's going. But I like to do this with the fan tip just to get an idea for myself of how wide the pattern is, how much water it's spraying down, and the driveway or some kind of cement is usually a good idea to check that. So what I'm seeing so far with that fan tip is I'm not getting coverage all the way across the spray, but it was kind of the same on my Chapin. So I kind of just learned to figure out exactly where it was kind of a little bit lighter on the edges and kind of focus on the middle section. I've slowed my pace a little bit more too to try to get a full coverage on there, but I was still getting a little bit lighter spots on the edges. So overall I'd say as I mentioned so far that it does feel much much better on your back. Uh, I haven't put a full four gallons of water in there. I normally don't just because it's kind of a lot of weight if you don't have to do that. But overall so far the actual feel of it is much better. Now I should be able to get it to function the way that I want it to. So I will do a little bit more investigating on that part. So I also went through and hand picked a bunch of crabgrass today and by a bunch I mean check that out put this all together here and uh, you know if you had a full crabgrass lawn that you could somehow make look a little bit darker it wouldn't really be that bad I kid of course but check this out I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but it just goes to show you how invasive crabgrass can be if you see this root right here on this tiny little plant it's already got itself down into the ground at that point. And so it's no wonder that crabgrass can completely take over a lawn when you see things like this. I just wanted to show you that. Anybody know what happened over here? <laughs> 